Hi, my name is Sean Walker, and I'm a Principal Product Success Architect and part of the Ranger team here at ServiceNow. Today I'm going to be talking to you about creating software entitlements. So in today's video, we're going to do a, show you a quick definition of what a software entitlement is. Then we'll go through the different ways to create software entitlements, and then I'll do a demo on the different ways to create those entitlements. So what is a software entitlement? So software entitlements represent that point in time purchase of a right to use the software. So when you purchase an entitlement, you don't actually own the software itself. You're purchasing a right to use that software. Software entitlements refer to the asset itself and it represents the, the type, the quantity, the cost and the right to use. Um, software entitlements uh, can also be referred to as software licenses in a lot of cases. So software entitlements, they define the license details of purchased software. So it's important when you're gathering those entitlements that you capture details like the PPN, which is the publisher part number, the cost, the quantity, etc. They also track the licenses that you've been allocated um, to those users or systems. So allocating it, allocating entitlements really helps the software asset manager validate that that user or that system is actually approved to use that entitlement. Um, software entitlements are associated with software models. So it's really important that you ensure the entitlement is associated with the correct software model. Um, incorrect or incorrectly configured software models can have a really big impact on your overall compliance position. Uh, entitlements are stored in the ALM license table, which can be a little bit confusing since there is another table named ALM entitlements, but that's where it's, uh, the system uses uh, to store those allocations of the entitlements. So there are several different ways to create entitlements in the software asset management workspace. The first is to use the guided walkthrough or the playbook experience. And this option is really great for those just getting it started out with software asset management because it takes you through step by step all the required information to, to properly create a software entitlement. The next is you can create individual entitlements using the standard entitlement form. So this is a great option for those who are more experienced SAM users and just want a quick entitlement uh, form to enter. And lastly, you can also use the bulk import process to import multiple entitlements at once. So this is great for those SAM users who are consolidating information directly from the publisher or their procurement data. So they've received like an invoice or they have a price sheet or uh, contract information and they wanna layer in say even hundreds of entitlements at once and bring them all in at the same time. I'm now going to do a demo of creating entitlements using the guided playbook experience in a Washington DC release of ServiceNow. Okay, so now I've logged in and navigated to the software asset workspace. So from here, I'm going to show you how to use the guided playbook experience to enter an entitlement. So the first thing I want to do is go to the license operations view and go to software entitlements. From here, I'll click on the new button. And this is where I have the option to use one of the three different things. So today we're gonna to go through the guided step-by-step -step walkthrough. So I click on next, and that will fire up the playbook experience. So the first thing it's gonna ask me is if it's on-premise or a SaaS product. In this case, we're gonna be entering some TechSmith Snagit license. So I know TechSmith is an on-premise, meaning it's installed locally on the device. So I'm gonna say it's on-premise instead of SaaS, and I'm gonna mark it as complete. And as you mark each, each step complete, it moves you to the next task in the playbook. So do I have a publisher part number for this? Yes, I do. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark this complete. And so now is where I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to enter my publisher part number. So I'm gonna copy this from my invoice, 
paste this in here and yeah it does show up it is found in our content publisher part lumber library and I can see that it automatically knew that this part number was for TechSmith Snag 2023, which is exactly what I have on my invoice. I'm going to mark this complete. And now we're going to move into <clears throat> the entitlement details section of the guided setup. So here's where I can enter an asset tag. And so I recommend using asset tags um, to help you kind of track some of these purchases. Um, they are free form. Um, asset tag field so I can put in like sorry this is snag it and we could put 2023 something like that or something more relevant to you um, I know TechSmith is the metric group is common and we don't really have an agreement so we're going to leave the agreement type as generic now looking at my invoice I know that I've purchased a per user license so I'm going to leave this at per user and it knows also based off of the part number that I entered that it is a per user license metric. Um, I do have maintenance on this agreement uh, or on this purchase so it is going to be a perpetual plus maintenance that is correct. So again because of the publisher part number it's already filled in a lot of this information for me. What I do need to do, however, is enter the terms of my maintenance. So we're going to say we purchased it yesterday and we purchased a two year, two year deal. Um, so we can change this to say 2026. We have two years of maintenance on it and we can mark this as complete. So from here is now where I enter how many did I purchase? So I know this time I purchased 10 copies of Snagit to use and each individual unit cost was $247. So each, each individual um, copy of Texan and Snagit costs $247. I've purchased 10 of them. Okay, that's right. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark this as complete. And now I can move on to some additional detail. And this is where you can start entering a lot of information. So perhaps you have multiple companies within your organization and you bought this for one of those two specific companies. Or maybe you purchased it for a specific office, right? So I purchased it for um, the Santa Clara office and these 10 copies are for that. Or maybe I purchased it for a specific department, say it's the HR department that needs snag it because they're doing a bunch of documentation and they need a whole bunch of tool to be able to do that. Um, so you can enter values in here. And again, these are all core tables. So they're going to be based off what you already have in the system today. You could create some new ones if you need to, but I recommend using the core tables. So I'm not going to track any of this um, because I'm just putting in an overall license. Um, for the entire company. So I'm going to go ahead and mark this as complete without actually entering any additional details. You don't, those aren't required fields. Same thing with this one. You don't actually need to populate the owned by, but again, if your organization is tracking who financially paid for this, you can put an owned by user. Um, maybe say the HR department head is the one that's coming out of that HR budget. So they own these licenses. In this case, I'm not going to do that. IT is doing all the purchasing, so it's kind of a general bucket, so I don't really need to track that. Here's where you can go ahead and you can start putting in some of uh, your vendor information. And vendor information is really helpful if you want to start tracking how much you spend for a specific vendor and running reports on that. So I purchased directly through or directly from the publisher TechSmith. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look and see if TechSmith is listed here as one of our vendors. And it is. So I'm going to actually make sure I fill this in again so I can use it for reporting purposes. Um, and I can also see when did I purchase it. I purchased it yesterday. Um, if we have an invoice number, which I do, I have this invoice number in my hand, I'm going to go ahead and put in the invoice number um, so I can track that as well too. Um, if this was coming from a request, you could put in the request line or it would be automatically fulfilled, but we're not gonna track any of that. And we're not gonna track GL account or cost center, but again, you can if you have that information.
And then next is where you can put in some contract details. So maybe I don't think you would have a lease contract for software, but maybe you have a specific group that supports this type of software um, or a specific user that supports this. Um, doubtful there's gonna be warranty expiration on software. You're gonna be tracking your maintenance through that maintenance field we populated earlier. So I'm gonna mark that as complete. I'm not gonna specify any support groups, but that's probably something your organization does have. And here we go, now we get to review the entitlement. So we can see we've got the asset tag I put in, metric group, publisher part number, metric, yeah, software model, type, purchase rights, everything, okay, great. There's that vendor information we put in. And there we go. That's all the stuff we filled out. Now we can click on finish and it will create the entitlement for us. So we can see here again, it's transferred all over to the entitlement. So from the guided playbook into the entitlement with everything that we, we specified, right? Even that financial stuff. And so we're good, we finished the playbook experience. Now all that's left to do is as you can see your default state when you create a new entitlement is build. So we're ready, everything looks good. Let's go ahead and publish this particular entitlement. And now we're good to go. Now we're good to go ahead and run reconciliation against TechSmith and see what comes up. So that's how you create an entitlement using the guided playbook experience. Okay, so in this video, we defined what software entitlements are and discussed the methods that they can be created. Then we did a demo of creating an entitlement using the guided playbook experience. For more information on how to create entitlements, you can go to the ServiceNow product documentation site and look for the Create Entitlements in Workspace uh, section, and that'll walk you through a lot of those things that I showed in the demo. Also on the YouTube ServiceNow community page, there will be a playlist called Ask a Ranger Software Asset Management. And there's where you're gonna find the four videos that are all related. So you've got a video on gathering and creating software entitlements. We've got this video on creating an entitlements using the guided playbook experience. We also have creating software entitlements manually and bulk creating software entitlements via the entitlement import feature. I hope you found this video helpful and I'll talk to you in the next one.